All right, I am going to show you dark matter in just a minute, and we will see it. It says the evidence for dark matter lies with gravity. Gravity is the force or glue that holds the universe together. In addition, dark matter can be detected through its gravitational influences on other objects, even as light itself, and can affect the motion of stars and galaxies. Well, guess what? I have photographed, well, Rodney Warren and I working together, photographed the dark matter and you will see it and this is the venturi rodney f figured out the venturi and um it separates the dark matter from the explosive particles and that's literally what a photon looks like and that's literally what an electron looks like and that is literally the explosive portion of it and when it's together it forms a photon that will bounce off of things that will explode and kill you if it hits you a ton of those at once those will just light you up now this is the concussive energetic matter they call these um, electron showers and these are the muons that go around and do not interact all right, let's just start at the beginning. The red pulse laser accelerating, exploding. The black balls walk away from the white balls, and they were attached just exactly an instant before they exploded at the venturi. So the venturi forced them into each other's regions, making them, the dark matter, just walk away from the white explosive matter. Now, this is what a pulse red laser looks like. Each one of those is a ball and the particle is way back here. Now everything out in front has to concuss and excite. Any push to shove makes excitation. This is where the Venturi is and it was accelerated and the particle itself pulled right out from it and the particle like I said is right there. And here is the particle. There is the particle. All right. Now you see these little white and black lines? These are also particles. They're just not showing as perfectly as this. Rod Warren did this, um, discovered this Venturi just by accident. It's just it's absolutely phenomenal. This is the exact same thing in green. This is the gravitational dark matter. No question. It does not concuss. It just walks away, and I'll show you that in a second. It does not illuminate. It does not absorb. It does not emit. It does not interact. It just holds on to the explosive portions. Now, just so you know, this is what happens to the white particles. That's what they do. It's called electron showers. Now, the dark particles just walk away on the outside. You don't forget, they say dark matter is what holds everything together, and that is exactly correct. The darkness in the center you see the dark in the center? You see the white on the outside? That's what magnets do, and they collect the dark matter on the inside. No question whatsoever. Every magnet does that. They all do that, see? The dark matter is literally right inside of the stuff that we're looking at today. Now, do you see that? I don't know if you can see the other things either. But anyway, right there, all of those are little magnets. Every one of those is a little ball magnet. And you, if I roll this one magnet here, watch, I don't know if I can, here, let me do it this way. All right, watch this. Whoop, that magnet right there. You see I'm rolling it? You see it's the black is in the center? and the white will follow it around. You see it? I hope you can see that. And that's what's going on with magnets and dark matter and dark energy. Now we separated them at the Venturi and actually made them walk away from each other, which I didn't think was possible, but it's quite obviously possible. You can see it. Now you see how these things interact? Isn't that something? You see the little white stripes around everything? The little white stripes around all the black spots. The center is always black. The center is always black. Remember, I showed you these were just like this. They were The black and the white balls were together. One this way and one that way. Making a photon. Half of that 
is an electron. Half of that wants to be with another one of these to make a full one. And once it gets into a full photon, it becomes less aggressive. This is extremely invasive. The Well, obviously, static electricity, you feel it, ooh, you know, electricity, electrocution. Static, lightning, all of that stuff. Now, this is where they concuss. The ball itself is like this. All right, when it comes in here, they all have to force down into each other's regions. They push against each other and create this enormous interaction. The black ones say, that's it, I'm done, I'm out of here. And then they come back in down here. So there's absolutely no question whatsoever that they were attached. No question whatsoever that they separated. No question whatsoever to that they came back together. These are repulsion patterns. These don't want to be next to each other. They will create stripes as they come out. Get away from me, you get away from me, you get away, get away. And they do that back and forth. Most of them come through the center because they're spinning as, as well. This is what these are. They spin. They don't, they don't wave like a flappy wave. They spin in a circle. Some of them are going to spin off to this way. Some of them are going to spin off this way and come out this way. But they're exploding from each other coming through here. Very, very obvious. And let's show this, let me show you the green. All right, remember again, this is the green. Now, here's those little black and white, or well, black and white strip looking things, this greenish tint because it's a green photon. And then you get into that same exact structure, that same exact structure, which is a photon. And you see all this stuff. Now, where do you see the pictures the guy sent me today? He actually sent me what, this is light. Now, this is light from a laser. So all it is is light. Now, what he sent me is molecules. Where do you see this? Blew my mind. Okay, my friends, you know the story with electron flood theory. I say that they're 100% dipole electrons. I showed you them, they look like this. Uh, the electron is like this. Photons are like that. I showed you red and green. So, now, this is electron flood theory. It says there's nothing but electrons and that the nucleus has what's called resonance stability. And it'll be a quantity that will become stable. They'll shake and they'll vibrate and they will... Sometimes you'll have isotopes and you'll have variations of the same element. Hydrogen has hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3, and then a ton of isotopes in between all those. So it's not just one big proton and one little new, uh, electron. No, absolutely not. The, the nucleus consists of a ball of electrons and each one of these is a magnet. Right? Just like the uh, uh, electron is. However, it has a weak force and a strong force in the electrons. And 1837 of them make a proton. 1838 neutral makes up a neutron. The same positives and negatives. Now, the weak force is the boson. And that's this right here. That right there doesn't do anything. Nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't absorb, doesn't emit, it doesn't interact, it doesn't luminesce, it doesn't do anything. It just is the glue that holds the rest of the universe together. And it will attract things, but it won't do much more than that. And that's why photons come together and they will allow each other to come next to each other. And that's the only way. Otherwise they stay apart. They don't want to be together. Now, the electron is they just come together. Now, molecules would look like this in my universe. We would have weak sections, and then we'd have powerful sections, and we'd have weak sections. Same thing. And guess what? This guy here sent this to me today. Howard Bankston. Now, I, this is the first interaction I've had. Well, he's, he, he's apparently been watching me for some time, and he knows about the electron flood theory. And he says, here it is. We're, we're flooded. We're absolutely, and we are. And he says, you could see this, look, here's what he says, Roger, this is what the electron flooding really looks like. You can see it at night with a really bright flashlight or a camera flash, and with a high resolution camera, you can take its picture and blow it up, really see it. What it is, I'm not sure, but it looks creepy, and it's getting thicker every day. Now, I don't know why he's saying it's getting thicker, but I did look at these very closely. 
and they're very interesting. And this one here shows what I want to show you. Now, we, you saw that, as I claimed, there's dark and there's white that makes up all matter. And the dark is a dark energy. We never see it. But it's there. It's within these particles. And here they are right now. Watch this. This is what I can show to give some credence to the things I'm saying. I showed you before the red and the green and they had these little bars and so forth. They were strictly light. They were strictly from a laser. All exactly the same. What we have here is anything coming through us through the atmosphere. It's hitting all kind of different things, but they all have the same thing in common. They have a dark center and whitish around them. Now, you see this? This is a little different. This has the dark around the outside edges and a white in the center, and this has something similar to this. They all have some crazy looking stuff, but the one that's really cool is down here. Look at this. You come way out and look at it. You say, oh, look at that. That's interesting. But that's the one that really interests me. Look at this. I, this is what my take is. This is the dark matter. And it has the white around it and a real whiteness glow between these. Because they have to share that whiteness. All of these things have to share the whiteness. And this hangs way out there, one extra piece of dark matter. But this is some kind of a molecule. To me, that's a molecule. And it could be water, H2O. And, you know, um, H2s and the O. It could, could be. I don't know. But the, there's water molecules in the air, absolutely. But when I went through all of these different pictures he sent me. There's just some fascinating stuff here. Absolutely fascinating. And you see, that's an absolute dark matter spot. There's places here that are darker than others now. I don't know exactly why. And there's a lot of thinking to do here, but, you know, I enjoy thinking. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, this is hard to get really clean shots. I don't know how Rod did it. He, he's, he's absolutely fabulous, what he did with these clean shots. Now, I think this is light in the background. You see these other colors here? I think that is, like, this is the dark and white of dark matter. And there's also dark and white in this, but there's also light coming through. They make these round circles. So I think that is another like a high-powered particle coming in, mixing with these low particles. You see, the, a lot of them, you see them, they're round. And that's, you know, see? Them? And I've shown that a number of times in the, the stuff that Rod sent to me. So I think it's time uh, to take into account electron flood theory. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. But it can be checked. They could look at this. This is no big deal. I'm talking about a Venturi. And if this is right, this changes everything. Because not only, did, and I know that the, my father took water and created hydrogen gas during World War II and ran a car on it. They had to add a little extra kerosene because the hydrogen gas was nothing more than electrons. And it was so powerful, it melted the pistons. So they had to add some impurities in there to stop it from melting the pistons. Now, we could absolutely figure a way of, because I don't think they knew what, what was going on, and they didn't care after that. Gasoline was like, I think he said, nine cents a gallon or 19 cents a gallon or something. He didn't care. So they, they just went about their life after the World War II. But now it's a whole different story. And if we can get, they're going to be running on hydrogen. Well, well, watch this. All right. This just came out. Hydrogen vehicles might soon become the global norm. And that's because it's a green energy. It, it's very, very friendly to the environment. However, they're still extracting it from hydrocarbons. That's fossil fuels and so forth. My Venturi, and my father did this, absolutely no question. It's, no, it's possible. Absolutely no question. And if you can t tweak that Venturi, different materials, different metals, different um, coatings, different widths, all that stuff, and change that Venturi around, you can come out with who knows what. And it depends on what you put in. And I'm going to tell you right now, we can crush things through this Venturi just as good as they crush things going all the way around that big 
thing for CERN. This crushes them coming through the Venturi just exactly the same way, only they're not hitting head on. They're hitting side to side. All right, I'm going to leave you with this final thought. CERN is hitting things head on and smashing them into little bits, but they're big chunks of material, the uh, nucleuses. Now, we're working with light, so we're using photons, crushing them this way, but it's still doing the same thing. It's crushing them. They're crushing them head on, we're crushing them side to side. Doesn't matter. We're getting the same effect, only better, and we're started with light instead of nuclear bits. Now, they're looking for the smallest bits of matter that exist. They should start with light, because they're go digging through mountains of debris. And we're looking at the particles of light actually separating in extreme detail like this. Here's the black balls separating from the white ones. The white ones are exploding. I mean, it's just, it can't be any more obvious. Pulse red laser exploding through the Venturi. We can mess around with this Venturi and literally separate, I think, almost any material from almost anything else if we can put it in a a gaseous form and a high pressure, because that's all you're doing with water. When we when we want to take the oxygen and the hydrogen out of water, separate them, we have to force them through that venturi as water particles. When they come out the other side, they're they're atomized. They've turned into their particle nature. All right, somebody get a hold of me. We'll talk.